and welcome to Shedding Starlight, a guide to the Kingdom Hearts mythos. Today, we're going to zoom out and look at a more macro topic. The various realms of the Kingdom Hearts universe, which are introduced to us in Ansem's 12th report, where he writes, There are many worlds in existence, some of which we know nothing about. The world in which we live, the realm of darkness, the realm of light, and the world in between. Wherein lies true nirvana? Just like in our first episode on world order, the words realm and world here are a bit more of magical uses of the terms rather than practical or scientific. Fans tend to have their own idea of how these realms are laid out. Some fans imagine them adjacent on a horizontal plane, but others picture these realms above one another vertically or as different dimensions entirely. This is because there are various instances throughout the series that can point to any of these being the case. So far, what you picture doesn't exactly matter as long as you can follow along in the story whenever these realms are relevant. So let's break down these great realms of light and darkness as well as the lesser areas in between. To begin, Ansem listing the world in which we live separately from the realm of light may lead fans to believe the latter is another place entirely, a heavenly realm that's blinding with light or something. But let's clear up a common misconception right now. The realm of light contains all the various little worlds, Hollow Bastion, Traverse Town, Destiny Islands before it fell to darkness, and all the Disney worlds as well. The Realm of Light is made up of the scattered galaxy we talked about in our episode on World Order, with the world in which we live being specifically Hollow Bastion. So why is the Realm of Light called that? It's likely in reference to the legend Kyrie's grandmother recites. Long ago, people lived in peace, bathed in the warmth of light. That was the state of the realm before people fought each other and destroyed the overall world. In contrast to the realm of light, the realm of darkness is a starkly isolated area with very few ways of entering it. So far, it doesn't seem the gummy ship can reach it at all. Riku ends up there after being discarded by Ansem, where he's then contacted by an inaudible voice that we can safely assume is King Mickey. Mickey says that with two hearts and two keys, they can close the big white double doors, which he calls the Door of Darkness. Later games call it the Door to Darkness, but we're sticking with the first game's terminology for now. So, this Door of Darkness is one of the few ways you can enter the Realm of Darkness. We don't see much of this realm in the first Kingdom Hearts game, only the near final scene of the Door of Darkness opening and showing us what's on the other side. Bizarre pillars of what is perhaps rock with veins of glowing crystal. Among these pillars are hordes of Heartless, approaching to cross the Door of Darkness. The world in between that Ansem mentions points to the end of the world that lies between the realms of light and darkness. The end of the world is essentially a graveyard for all the worlds whose hearts were taken by the heartless and therefore destroyed. The further you explore this world, the more you see resembling places like Aurora or Snow White's worlds, as well as Destiny Islands that's now corrupted and damaged from darkness. It seems that Ansem reached the end of the world through the Hollow Bastion keyhole created by the Princesses of Heart. We've discussed on the podcast before that keyholes lead to the hearts of worlds, and Ansem wonders in his 10th report if the core of the world's heart is the world of the heartless. After beating Hollow Bastion, the princesses say the darkness coming from the keyhole engulfed Ansem, and that later he went far away where they now feel a powerful darkness growing. With all this, along with Goofy calling the end of the world a heartless world, it seems that Ansem, after being pulled into Hollow Bastion's keyhole, was able to reach the end of the world. 
Another common misconception is that the end of the world lies inside the realm of darkness since it's a very dark world itself, but it might be more accurate to say it's touching or adjacent to that realm since it's right outside the door of darkness. While the end of the world and the realm of darkness are similar, unfortunately we can't get into those similarities until later games. Likewise, when it comes to the overall area between these two realms, some fans interpret it as being included in the realm of light since it's still accessible with the gummy ship and it's outside the door of darkness. But others think that if a place is in this gray area, then it should be considered outside the realm of light. A beach analogy might help you wrap your mind around this. Let's say the ocean is the realm of darkness and the coastland is the realm of light. The sand is coated with water from the ocean, so do you consider it separate from the coastland or still a part of it? While it's more objective to say places like the end of the world are not in the realm of darkness, whether they're a part of the realm of light or consider their own realm entirely might be open for debate, at least in the first Kingdom Hearts game alone. The end of the world may not be the only world located in the area between the realms of light and darkness. Another world that might belong between these realms is Traverse Town. The end of the world contains the ruins of destroyed worlds, but as for the people who lived on those worlds, some of them end up at Traverse Town. When Destiny Islands was destroyed, Sora was sucked into this giant black hole of darkness and ended up at Traverse Town himself. So Traverse Town also has some sort of connection to the worlds destroyed by darkness. Another place we can talk about is the vast green field seen at the very end of the game. This place is interesting because while Kairi ends up back at Destiny Islands, Sora, Donald, and Goofy end up here. Whether they end up here randomly or not is unknown for now. But if it's not random, Sora and the others ending up here after being at the Door of Darkness implies that this world might be tied to the area between the realms of light and darkness as well. The final topic we want to bring up is the passage found at World Terminus, which mentions the Realm of Kingdom Hearts. Much like the Realm of Light, this might mislead someone into thinking that Kingdom Hearts is its own separate place. But this is most likely a misunderstanding of the reading, in that rather, the Realm of Kingdom Hearts is in reference to the Realm of Darkness since it's implied to be where Kingdom Hearts is located, with the Door of Darkness being the path leading to it. So it may not be that Kingdom Hearts is its own realm, but rather still a vague entity that within lies untold wisdom. So, to summarize everything we've presented today, we have the Realm of Light, which consists of all, if not most, of the various little worlds. There's also the isolated Realm of Darkness, which seems to contain Kingdom Hearts, and has large white doors called the Door of Darkness for its entrance. Then, there's places in between these two realms, like the End of the World, most notably. Most consider this in-between area as included in the Realm of Light, but there might be others that disagree. It's all a bit to keep track of if you're a new fan, but throughout the series, you will be given more time with all of these interesting locations of Kingdom Hearts. Welcome back everybody to Shedding Starlight, the discussion section. We just gave you a uh, about 10 minute section on uh, the realms of the first Kingdom Hearts game, a, about a 10 minute presentation about what all of that means about uh, <laughs> Ansem's report and what he's looking for and what these different places are. I'm here with Mel. Say hi, Mel. Help me, I'm in the realm of darkness. <laughs> Let me not know. Not to be out. Hello. Um, hello. Hi, Mel. How are you doing? 
I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Amazing. Are you ready to tackle all of my and everyone else's questions that stem from this episode today? Let's fucking get into it. Let's fucking get into it. Incredible. So this is a long script. In my opinion, a lot of it is straightforward. And then there's like one or two paragraphs that are very less straightforward. I know. I know. (laughs) <laughs> um so we're gonna talk about that so let me say this let me say this a lot of yeah. the ones that are kind of like mm, it could be this or it could be that we don't know for uh-huh. new listeners just to let you know i think advanced people already know this they can kind of figure it out but if you're new to kingdom hearts this is the first game you've ever played i when i write these papers or these scripts for us to read aloud I'm purposely thinking of seeds to plant so that in the future, when revelations come about, you don't feel like it came out of nowhere. We're trying to help you kind of see patterns of things so that you can kind of tell when some when something else is connected, you kind of see where that came from and you're not completely lost. But unfortunately, yeah. before the seeds are sown, you might look down at a seed and go, what the fuck is this seed here for? <laughs> like, why what did, is that? Why did they include this in the podcast? Like, uh-huh. I promise everything is connected. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. We have a very unique perspective in that we have 13 games after this or something like that. to okay. So we can know what's important for later yes um so that's what we're doing that's that's what mel's doing i'm not gonna claim any credit for that because mel is the one who writes scripts and i'm the one who's like so what does that mean um but i think to start out um at the very i think towards the end of this script we talked about um or is it at the beginning i don't remember it's at the end of are you talking about number one Yes. The, this is the beginning. <laughs> this was very okay, near the beginning. beginning. Never mind. Scratch all that. At the <laughs> very beginning, I put in the discussion, um, and some talking about the world in which we live, um, referring to Hollow Bastion. Mm. And so this kind of um put me in a place of wondering. I think a question that popped up during our very first episode, which this episode is obviously very connected to our first episode. Mm. Um, yes. It's it's very interesting on like how how does he know all this? How much does he know? Where did he get this knowledge? Um, yeah, it's just interesting. Like he is a ruler of of this world, yeah, which puts him in a unique perspective because the president gets all of the international secrets and everything. <laughs> Ansem has the nuclear code. <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, but yeah, it's just very interesting to see that he he knows all this and can eliminate all of this. a fuck ton. It kind of reminds me of like real life astronomy. Like when, yeah. I, when NASA comes out with news, like Jupiter has this type of atmosphere. I'm like, girl, <laughs> how the fuck do you know that? Shut yeah. the fuck up. There's no way your little telescope can tell me that. I don't care how big it is. And yeah, literally. I guess, you know, that's kind of like how I think about Ansem. It's like, Ansem, how the fuck do you know all this? You're just making shit up. Like, <laughs> you happen to be right. Yeah. <laughs> but you're still just making this up. But no, whatever. yeah, it's to me, it's more of like the ancient Greeks looking up at the sky and being like, the earth is round. Like, how did you know? Like, you did math and that told you all of that. You plugged some numbers in and you wrote it down on some paper. And that is so real. That's a really good point. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. But yeah, it's just it's interesting to think about that and like kind of wonder how he got <clears throat> he got to this place of of uh, knowledge. And, you know, I think that is, you know, we're still very vague you and I are still very big in this podcast on, yeah. like, what Kingdom Hearts is, what it does. Which, like, don't worry, we will get to that eventually. Like, calm down. Uh-huh. But, it, you know, right now we've discussed how Kingdom Hearts seems to be, like, a source of knowledge or wisdom. And so I think with, with Ansem figuring all this out about how the worlds and the realms work, I think him 
It's almost like, what's that saying about science where it's like, the more you learn, the less you know, or something like that? I guess like his hunger for knowledge really is driving him to do such insane things just for this source of like unlimited knowledge, especially because... When he possesses Riku, he's like, he says, I know all that there is to know. And I'm like, bitch, then why do you want Kingdom Hearts? Like, sit down. <laughs> Calm down. But I whatever. am Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> Nerds. Um, nerd. Fucking weirdo. So, well, then, Hannah, let's move down a little bit down the list. And let me yes. ask you, because I'm really interested in what you think, because I know that you've grown up playing Kingdom Hearts 2. You're a little mm-hmm. less familiar with Kingdom Hearts 1, but you still, like, know everything. Like, you're fine. Uh-huh. But yeah. I want to ask you, how do you picture the layout of, like, where's the realm of light and where is the realm of darkness in relation to that? Can, can you see the apple? <laughs> yes, I can see the apple. Okay, so I can. what are you picturing? Um, So I think later games influenced my answer to this, mm, but I yeah. think with this information... Um, how I picture it as it's, like, happening, I think I definitely picture it dimensionally. So, like, very, like, um, Doctor Who, it's bigger on the inside type deal, you know? Um, so, like, do you know what I'm talking about when I say that? I do know what you're talking about, but are you talking about, like, the realm of darkness is bigger on the inside? Yeah, so, like, the door, so, like, the door to darkness being the door to the TARDIS, you know? Yes. Abs- yeah. of, I can absolutely see and understand that totally. Yeah, so it's like it it is a door to a different dimension and they're like what is behind it when it's not open is different from what's inside it. Yeah, I think yeah. I, I agree with that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's my visualization of it. The tricky at this thing point. about that description which I do agree with mm-hmm. is that like okay, so I'm kind of going to move on into our next point, but connect it with what you said, because I think you said a really uh-huh. good point, is okay. how if the realm of darkness is kind of like the the TARDIS of the world, which uh-huh. if any of you people are thinking we're so nerdy for bringing up Doctor Who, shut up. <laughs> you're listening to a podcast about Kingdom Hearts. You're not any better. Okay, listen. But anyway, yeah. I have such a... It helps me to just imagine the realm of darkness as an actual place. Yeah. Just so that it helps me understand this area in between the realm of light and the darkness a little bit yeah. more. Because, yeah. So we got a, a handful of questions and emails kind of asking about the end of the world because, you know, they're, what they're asking is, is it in the realm of darkness or not? And I, with this whole area in between the realm and the, the realm of light and the realm of darkness, because it's not technically inside the TARDIS, in my head, right, places like the end of the world are still in the realm of light. Because to yeah. me, any place that's reachable with the gummy ship is in the realm of light. And yeah. I don't know if that's necessarily, like, a definitive rule, but so far, that has always been the case. Because, like, yeah. in future games, they'll... So Kingdom Hearts 1, outside of Ansem's Report 12, the the term Realm of Light in Kingdom Hearts 1 is never said. It's never spoken. Nobody ever says it. And I think that's why a lot of people get the impression that the realm of light is like heaven or like something, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Which, you know, I don't blame them for thinking that. But uh-huh. in later games, the realm of light is said. So, and I think when you play those later games, that's when it kind of clicks for you that like, oh, the realm of light is like where all these worlds are. Like, oh, mm-hmm. okay. Like, wish somebody yeah. would have said that earlier. Or like, <laughs> Yeah, it is the main setting of, of Kingdom Hearts. Yes. And so, but whenever they're talking about the realm of light in future games, to me, it's including places that are in the in-between. And so I think that's why for me and from my perspective, this area in-between 
and worlds like the end of the world, even though the end of the world looks super spooky and it's kind of weird and really dark, to mm-hmm. me, it's still in the realm of light. It's just right. in that beach that's covered with water, even though it's not technically in the ocean. Uh huh. So gotcha. anyway, but um, I'm trying to think. Well, oh, go ahead. I was well. well no, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. Um, I was just trying to think like a visual way to remember that, and mm. like the fact that the the crossroads and the end of the world looks so different. I don't think I'd find any sort of visual like <laughs> uh, connection between them to be like mm. a like a, the gummy ship is a good rule of thumb. I was just trying to think of another visual rule of thumb, um, but. Yeah, that's all I wanted to say. What what did no, you have to that, say? No, that's a good point. Because that little... So the if you're listening and you're like, what the fuck is a crossroads? Crossroads <laughs> is that big green lushy area. That's just like the fan coined term of that area. I forgot we didn't actually say that in the script. That's well. okay. Who cares? <laughs> um, as long as we explain it. I'm like, it doesn't yeah, matter. yeah, yeah. And plus, uh-huh. like, I think um, giving new fans terminology... That mm-hmm. experienced fans have been using for years will yeah. help new fans kind of like catch on and be like, oh, so that's what yeah. everybody's talking about. You know, like the Keyblade of Heart. Like, what the fuck is that? Oh, but anyway. <laughs> um, so coming, you know, you were comparing it with the crossroads with the end of the world. Mm-hmm. And the other thing about the end of the world is that we did get a lot of questions about it that we can't unfortunately directly answer because i think it spills a lot of the story of future games and we kind of want to let those revelations play out on their own for emotional impact but i will say that when worlds fall to darkness it seems to me this is kind of how i picture it or imagine it is that when worlds fall to darkness or their hearts are taken by heartless i almost wonder if they like crumble and those crumbs kind of spread out and uh-huh. kind of become dust to different areas. And I think that is part of the reason why we might see worlds at the end of the world. You know, like, mm-hmm. you know, we see areas that are kind of reminiscing of the different old Disney fairy tale movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's not like we see, like, any of those worlds intact. They're kind yeah. of just all meshed together. So it it seems to me that they're like different parts of the planet when it crumbles kind of spread and land in different areas. And I hope that experienced fans who sent in questions about the end of the world can read in between the lines of what I'm trying to say <laughs> and that what I'm saying is answering their questions. Hopefully. Yeah. But we'll we have see. to play a fucking logic puzzle with with this sometimes. I know what we really got to dance around. Yeah, we do. Um, and speaking of dancing around, um, I need all of you to come back a few years in the past with me when I was streaming a lot of these Kingdom Hearts games for the first time. And the reason why this podcast exists is because I streamed the whole series on Twitch, and Mel was in my chat answering questions for me because I was having trouble understanding the lore. So I'm going to go back into that little lore goblin mode a little bit and just kind of (laughs) rapid fire some questions at Mel and hope that we can like chew on the the concept that I'm about to bring up. Okay. And we can all move forward together. Okay. So when I was reading through the script for the first time, I was like, I fell into a pit of I don't get what this is. <laughs> um, whenever, <laughs> whenever we talked about um, Ansem reaching the end of the world through Hollow Bastion's keyhole, yeah, it's kind of so, weird. Yeah, it's I'm I read that paragraph and. I got confused, but I think what I was confused about is, is that something that could happen with each world or is that something that is specific to Hollow Bastion or is that even something Mm. we can answer at this point? You know, I think that's a really good question because 
Another question that we've gotten a few times is how the fuck did Mickey end up in the realm of darkness? Like, right. if he can't cross through the big white doors, like, how the fuck did he get there? And I wonder if maybe... So, the interesting thing is, is that going through that keyhole, Ansem didn't end up in the realm of darkness. He ended up right outside it. So, I guess... Right. You know, even if we were to say that Mickey was around when a door when a world was falling to darkness and maybe got like you know involved or accidentally mm-hmm. trapped or something and right that would still only take him i would think to the end, end of the world mm-hmm. and so yeah but about hollow bastion itself i have been on and off ever since this this podcast's kind of um Conception, I have been debating and teeter-tottering on if I want to do an episode just about Hollow Bastion because it is just so interesting because, yeah. you know, why are the Seven Hearts brought there? Why was that keyhole that they made summoned there? Why yeah. are there a bunch of pipes everywhere that seem to just completely take over and warp the entire world? How come mm-hmm. Hollow Bastion... How come Hollow Bastion's heart wasn't taken by the Heartless and therefore Hollow Bastion itself end up at the end of the world in Shatters as well? Like, Mm -hmm. there's just so many weird fucking things. But Hollow Bastion, to this day, like, even with all of these other games, I think Hollow Bastion is one of the most, if not the most, interesting world in all of Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Like, I'm just, like, obsessed with it. And I almost wonder, like, if we had all of the answers, all of the questions answered, would I still be as interested or am I only interested because it's so mysterious, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But either yeah, that way, makes sense. I think there might be some reason as to why, one, Hollow Bastion did not fall to darkness, but was dead, instead, like, overcome with all these pipes. Two, mm-hmm. that... The Princesses of Heart were brought there, and a keyhole was summoned there because of the Princesses of Heart that eventually Ansem went through and reached the end of the world. I think Uh there's some kind of nested connection, spider web, between all of these different points. But unfortunately, I can't tell you what it is. I (laughs) wish I could. And not even because I know, but I can't say because of spoilers. No, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It, it's just very main character energy coming from this one world. Yes. It's just like, why are you special? <laughs> yeah. Why are you the chosen one? Um, so then I have a part two to this question, which is not super, I mean, kind of related, I guess. Goofy calling the end of the world a heartless world. What is a heartless world? What does that mean? Is that something so, we've talked about already? N- no, we haven't. Okay. But I assume okay. he calls it a heartless world because it is... The remnants of the worlds whose hearts were taken by Heartless. So I don't even know if before all of these worlds started blinking out and getting their hearts taken away, the end of the world itself might not have existed at all. It might have just been like empty blank space among the many stars. And Mm -hmm. so maybe all of these different clusters of destroyed worlds starting coming together and maybe that's why Goofy called it a heartless world. And it's like, it's kind of, to me, Goofy calling it a heartless world is definitely like a Kingdom Hearts 1 thing. Where I yeah. don't know if it, in Kingdom Hearts 3 something would ever be called a heartless right. world, you know? Right, yeah. So it's like, I think we just have to like say, oh, it's just the place where heartless kind of roam about free you know, they're the top right. dogs and they're living on a bunch of ruins of dead worlds. I right. think, unfortunately, so, that's the best we got. Yeah, literally a world full of Heartless. Not mm. that it's a special, you know, quote yeah. unquote Heartless world. Okay. That's a good got point. It. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think that was, uh, those were the two roots of my confusion with this whole thing is that mm. like, I think I was just curious about all of the other worlds 
And yeah. that, if that was like an established rule that yeah. like, you know, the keyhole leads to the end of the world, leads to the door to darkness or the realm of darkness. Um, but that is, clears like, it up. Well, it, I guess it clears it up, but I'm still kind of a little confused myself well, because yeah, the fact what I mean, what I mean when I say that it clears it up is no. say, me saying that like, oh, Hollow Bastion is mysterious. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Establishing the fact that there is mystery rather than yeah, just yeah, not yeah. understanding it. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So this next point, I think, will kind of transition us into our viewer questions. Um, I put down here. I put in the quote, um, uh, this is most likely the understanding of the, a misunderstanding of the reading and that rather the realm of Kingdom Hearts is the realm of darkness since it's implied to be where Kingdom Hearts is located with the door of darkness being the path to it. So I wrote down here. So this connects back to Ansem's search for true Nirvana, which is the 12th report, right? That's the yes. one at the beginning here. Yes. Um, which is... The whole reason why we have these reports, I guess, since Kingdom Hearts is interpreted as true wisdom. So, like, kind of one in the same, true Nirvana, true wisdom. Yeah. Yes. Connected. <laughs> and yes. And I, this is connected to Dixo's email. So, Dixo messaged us two overall questions, but we're going to answer the second one first. So, Dixo asks also, hi again. Thank you once again for the email. Hi, Dixo. Thank you for your question. How much do you think we should read into the fact that the report we get from beating Sephiroth, which is the twelfth report, has Ansem musing about looking for a paradise, or perhaps a promised land even, depending on the interpretation? So, he doesn't say paradise, he says nirvana. And I maybe it's different based off of... Um, translations, maybe in different languages, he says different things. But as for English, he says the word nirvana. And yeah, I'm not super familiar with Buddhism, but it's my understanding that nirvana is a state of mind and a state of being and that paradise is more like a place. And yeah. so <clears throat> that is really important to distinguish when we're talking about what Ansem wants out of Kingdom Hearts. Does he yeah. think it's a place that he can visit or will it grant him a state of mind? And like like we said, that true wisdom, that mm -hmm. untold wisdom, is that what he wants? And in my opinion, yeah. yes, that's what he wants. Not necessarily to visit a place. Yeah, I think it would be, I think the reason why these two things are so connected is probably because, this is just me speculating, but like getting to paradise probably causes nirvana. They're two mm. very connected concepts at least like that's so not to get into my religious trauma but i uh, grew up catholic so i like i know that like at least in christianity the concept of heaven is being with god and having true peace so like i assume mm. that that kind of translates to other religions as well maybe i don't know i'm speculating here but like that's i think that since they're just two very connected concepts that People might think they're a little interchangeable, but if we're reading super literally here, I would agree with you that nirvana mm. is a state of being and paradise is a place. Now, some people might go to paradise to achieve nirvana. Yes. But um, they're two different things in Got my in my scope of view. I think that's a that's really wise of you to say. And that honestly, like, helps me understand future developments of this series that <laughs> okay. we can't talk about yet. Like kind of okay. birth by sleep and what uh -huh. the person from that game kind of wants. Uh-huh. Yeah. But all in due time. But anyway. <laughs> all in due time. So Deekso's first ha first question of their email says, so the battle against Ansem has us in the realm of light still, which, you know, like we said, some people think that if you're in the end of the world, you're still in the realm of light, which I agree with, but I mm -hmm. don't know if that's definitive. I can't remember, unfortunately. Given mm -hmm. that we see the realm of darkness on the other side of the door, if that pitch black void surrounding the door to darkness isn't darkness, what is it? So I was almost like debating on if 
we should wait for this question for the next episode. But mm. I mean, like, whatever. I'll just get into it now. Like, who cares? <laughs> who cares? Who cares? So, what Dixo was talking about, if you're a new Kingdom Hearts fan and you're like, what? So, before you fight Ansem as his super large, heartless fight, you know, where you glide around, when you first look at the door, there's nothing really around it. It's just that big white door. But then after you beat Ansem and you see the cutscene of him trying to, like, open the door and summon Kingdom Hearts, you see this big black heart silhouette around the door. And a lot of fans have kind of wondered, like, is this Kingdom Hearts? Because how Kingdom how Ansem describes Kingdom Hearts a couple of times is, like, the great heart, the heart of all worlds, the great darkness that's sealed within the great heart. And so... There's kind of like this unanimous understanding among among fans that this kind of like negative, what's the term? You know, like those two guys staring at each other that also look like a vase? Oh, yeah. Um, it, is it, I is don't it just called like term. negative absency or like, <laughs> I don't know. I would just say an illusion. I don't know. <laughs> Um, I can try to Google it really quick. It's like absent space or... Oh, it's just called negative space. Okay. Oh, so, yeah. okay. It just seems like um, there's this dark heart-shaped kind of black void around the door that a lot of fans have come to the speculation that that's Kingdom Hearts. I personally, knowing what we know, am not honestly really willing to say that it's Kingdom Hearts. It might be, but it's it's just a little too different from what we know now that I personally, even if at one point in my life I did think it was Kingdom Hearts, I have now taken that back and revoked that, and I personally am a little unsure. But, I mean, honestly, thinking that is Kingdom Hearts, there's no fucking shame. Like, there's, it doesn't yeah. hurt anything. It doesn't affect anything. If you think that's Kingdom Hearts, then, like, hell yeah, by all means. <laughs> like, you know, whatever. Yeah. So, anyway, that's what Dixa was referring to. Mm-hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Well, Kingdom Hearts, to me, will always be the giant moon on the cover of the game. Just that's my take on it. <laughs> she's so beautiful. She's like a pearl. I, a pearl I know, in the shape of a heart. Like, One more can she's like a block of cheese that I want to eat. So Flynn, also, oh my God, Hannah. So what? we got our first email from my good friend Flynn. <gasps> and me, me and Flynn have been Kingdom Hearts fans for like a decade, maybe over a decade. Oh my Flynn gosh. Flynn has seen me through every single Kingdom Hearts project I have ever made. So when <laughs> we got that email from him, oh my God, I was ecstatic. But anyway. Hi, Flynn. Hi, hi Flynn. Hi, I'm Hannah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so, the th- okay. So Flynn asks, <laughs> how did Riku end up in the Realm of Darkness and with his body, no less? He's definitely there before Ansem is defeated, as we see a cutscene of him somewhere between Hollow Bastion and the final boss in the final mix version. Which, honestly, like, if you're a new fan, you're like, do I have final mix? If you got it on the PS4, yes, you do. Don't worry about it. (laughs) Ansem's Report 12 says, to get to the Realm of Darkness, one must go through the doors of Kingdom Hearts, the place where the world's heart connect. But clearly, he's just flat out wrong there. King Mickey got in somehow, as did Riku. So, um, once again... Actually, I don't know if this is once again. I feel like I said this before, but maybe I didn't. Uh-huh. But in the next episode, we're going to be talking more about Mickey. Uh, I won't get into like, what's the next episode topic just yet. You know, we'll wait a little bit, but. You got to get to the end of the episode for that. That's right. You, you got to make it all the way there. <laughs> um, But I, because we talked about Riku being in the realm of darkness before and how it kind of just seemed like he ended up there. After Riku was, like, done with him, like, "Mm, I don't need you anymore, and, like, flicked him away. (laughs) You know, once again, this kind of emphasizes this idea, especially with Mickey, that this game keeps saying that Kingdom Hearts seems to be the only way to the Realm of Darkness, but it also just does not seem to be the case. And so, I don't know... 
you know, just overall, hopefully, if we haven't yet, then we can in the future. Hopefully, in the future, we can really get into how the fuck do you enter the realm of darkness? How does mm-hmm. it happen? We might not be able to really fully comb through that answer in this episode, and maybe not even in the next episode, <laughs> but hopefully, eventually, we will be able to be like, okay. We have enough information. Enough story is passed. Here's all the different ways you can enter the realm of darkness. Da, 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 but mm-hmm. unfortunately, I just don't think we're there yet. Well, I would like to take a vacation to the realm of darkness just to be a tourist. So I'm hoping that we can figure that out soon so it doesn't ruin <laughs> my travel plans. I'd love to take little geodes from the realm of darkness and smash those yeah. suckers up. You know, they're glowy. You know, they're pretty. Uh-huh. I saw those little rocky formations at the end of Kingdom Hearts. Those looked so pretty. (laughs) So actually, this is not anything to do with the emails, but as I was writing the script and I was like, okay, what the fuck am I looking at? Like pillars of rock. They have like veins of glowing crystal. Like that's what I wrote, right? Uh But then like I got like this icky, eerie feeling down my spine because I was like, what if like that's not rock? What if you touch the formations that all those Heartless were on, and it's, like, soft. Like, that would be awful. That would be so bad. Anyway. I'm pulling up pictures of it. That would be horrible. It would be so gross. (laughs) Unfortunately, we can't get to all of Flynn's questions because I think a couple of them we've already answered in the presentation. Um, But Flynn also asks... What is up with the grassy plains? The Trinity, which, you know, if you're a new Kingdom Hearts fan, the Trinity is often what people call Sword Donald and Goofy. It's just shorthand. Because of the, the Trinity marks that you can um, unlock in Kingdom Hearts 1, uh, accomplish, examine, I don't know. The Trinity are apparently able to walk from whatever is left at the end of the world at the door to some random sunny plains. Also, Pluto got there? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So to me, as you know, like you said in the beginning, um, when we were kind of comparing like the is the end of the world between the light and the darkness, and it looks really scary, but mm-hmm. then these grass of plains might be between the end of the darkness and it looks really nice, looks like a fucking vacation, Windows XP, mm-hmm. you know, so Yeah. It kind of ooh, and you know what? I'm kind of going to make a jump here and scroll all the way down to Shards of Truth's email. Because Shard of, Shards of, Shard of Truth sent us an email that unfortunately I won't really be able to directly quote them because they kind of start talking about things that are introduced in later games. But overall, Shard of Truth, thank you for your email, kind of gave us another analogy to describe the area between the light and darkness. Because... When I used the beach analogy, we were kind of, that's kind of makes you imagine like a horizontal plane of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Shard of Truth gives us a stairway analogy, and that kind of gives us a more vertical presentation. Yeah. Um, Where each world that's in the area in between the light and darkness can kind of be like a stairway. So each world gets darker and darker as you step down through the staircase. And so it might be that the planes are higher up on the staircase and then the end of the world is much lower, if that makes sense. Is that a lower Uh step? So what would be the order then? So that would be like the realm of light and then... Go ahead. Maybe like... I mean, it's it's all the baitable to me. Right. So you might like disagree. You might think, mm, I think this world's a little bit more darker. But like, I, you know, let's say like the realm of light, the grassy plains, maybe Traverse Town, if Traverse Town is located in this area in between. Yeah. And then maybe the end of the world and then the realm of darkness. Okay. Gotcha. I'm trying to remember what what worlds are only in Kingdom Hearts 1 and not accidentally (laughs) say a world from a future game. Yeah, no, you're good. But anyway. But also, you know, Flynn from before also mentioned Pluto's there. Honestly, 
I don't know what the fuck is going on with Pluto. Here's Pluto, Pluto. is a multi-dimensional <clears throat> being that he, can travel at the blink of an eye through dimensions. Real. Real talk. <laughs> Throughout this series, if you see Pluto somewhere, you just gotta accept that. You just gotta go, yep, <laughs> there's Pluto. There he is. Because... <laughs> I'm just like, damn, does this guy have a gummy ship himself? Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, so, Pluto driving the gummy ship. That's so good. That's that is good. so cute. It's uh, awe activated. Yes. Uh, uh, incredible. Incredible, incredible thoughts. So the last emailer that I would like to get to is Kronzi. Hello, Kronzi. Thank you for the email. Hi, Kronzi. Kronzi sent us a couple of questions, but I feel like... Um, their first two questions are things we've already discussed and covered in this episode. Yeah. But I am really curious about, or at least interested in, their last question. So, Kronzi wrote, The world terminus that leads to different worlds Sora and the gang has already visited, and forces them to visit those worlds where the keyhole still needs to be sealed, how is it that Sora does not vid- visit any new worlds? If every star in the sky is a world, it feels like a big coincidence that they only visit the worlds in which were relevant to the game. It would make sense if all the worlds where the princesses of heart stem from would be included, but this is not the case. So, like, for example, one of the worlds... Do you do you know what uh, Kronzi is referring to right now? Uh, which part? <laughs> um, so Kronzi's kind of talking about at the end of the world... At one point, you kind of go through these pillars of light, and every time you step through a pillar of light, you reach a place that you've been before. So you'll like, oh, so yeah. like one of the places that you end up at is the one hundred acre woods, and you're just like, what right. the fuck? Like, why am I here? Right, 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 right. So to me, when I personally interpret these places that you visit. As not being, like, the real worlds themselves, because, I mean, like, I guess for one, there's still, like, the ominous music playing, and to me, that's kind of, like, a sign that you're not actually at that world, you're still at the end of the world. And I I know that kind of um, uh, defies the word... Terminus, because I think Terminus is like terminal, right? Like a station, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I just don't think that that's what's happening here. In that, rather, we're visiting places that Sora remembers, or yeah. like I personally call them echoes, because they just kind of seem like hollow. Like you still hear it. You still hear an echo of something, but it just seems more, more, less lifeful, more lifeless. How do you say Lifelike? That? It seems less lifelike, and it kind of just seems like a flat version of itself. So that's what I call them. I call these echoes, and I didn't think I really realized I call them echoes until years later when we see something kind of similar happen in the future of the series. Even though this kind of happens again in the future, something kind of similar it still kind of gives me the vibe that it's just like a memory from his heart. Like he's not actually there. Especially because one of the worlds that he visits at the end of the world is the 100 Acre Wood, which was like a magical book. So it's like, why would the end of the world lead him there of all places? And so, but then, you know, that kind of begs the question because the very last of these memory world echo things is the world terminus lab that you and I've been talking about throughout the whole series of this podcast. Uh And this is a place that Sora's never been to before. Right. And so I want to say that, that I want to say that these places that Sora's seeing is from his own heart. It's from its own memory, but Uh clearly that is a contradiction, and that's a hole in the theory that I think. But I don't, I still don't necessarily feel like he's actually going to these places, personally. But maybe that's just my own interpretation. 
And maybe I just assumed that that's what everybody else was thought when everybody else was on a different page than me and I just never knew. Um, excuse me if this is a stupid question, but has Kyrie been to the World Terminus Lab? Oh my god. Maybe she <laughs> has. Because Ansem was like, I'm going to experiment on people. I found this girl. You and mm-hmm. I talked about how heartless are drawn to the princesses of heart. So maybe they were drawn to her in there. That's a good point, Hannah. But okay, there we go. <laughs> That's so interesting. If Sora was able to see this place, not because of his own heart, because at this point, Kairi's heart had left Sora. When Sora goes to the end of the world, Kairi's not in his body anymore. Uh huh. Right. But okay. it seems like she still kind of left those parts of her with him. Uh huh. And so it'd be really, really interesting if he was able to see this room because of her. That's a very oh, Hannah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> this is why I'm so glad you're here with me. I love doing See, this See, I you. have sparks of wisdom every now and then. <laughs> but like, it's just, it's a fleeting moment every every so often that I just need to grab onto. And I only think it's anything because you say that it's anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I'm glad I can help. Okay, the Sometimes. last question I want to get to is at the very, very bottom. This was asked a long time ago on a a few of them, not like the previous episode, but I think a few episodes ago. So Nero Nova 888 on YouTube, hello, thank you for the question, asked, why was Kyrie basically teleported back to Destiny Islands at the end of Kingdom Hearts 1 when we know that in that game she wasn't from that world to begin with? And this is kind of like um, going back to the grassy plains. How come Sora... And the others ended up there and mm-hmm. not some other world. Is it random or does it mean something? Because it, I wonder if the reason why Kyrie ended up back at Destiny Islands is because maybe that's like hypothetically home is where the heart is. Or like, yeah. you know, she grew up there. That might be what she considers home. Um, but I do think that that's a good question that I can't necessarily say that's like, that's the definitive answer, but rather mm-hmm. that's just how I interpret the situation. What do you think yeah. of that? No, I think that makes sense. I would agree with that. Mm. Um, it's it's what she remembers, you know? She yeah. doesn't really remember her old home. Mm-hmm. So I would agree with that. Okay, well, so <laughs> I guess now's a good time to say what the next episode is. Huh? Yeah, Mel, tell us what the next episode is about that we've been hinting at for this whole 50 minute discussion (laughs) (laughs) so we had to lay out this episode first as groundworks for the next episode because the next episode we are going back to the passage at world terminus that we keep fucking talking about (laughs) and this this time we're doing like a deep dive into that passage what the hell is this guy rambling about during this whole paragraph how come we can only visit it once you know like what is the deal And because we're talking about the contents of that passage, we're also talking deeply, more deeply about um, the door to darkness or the door of darkness. And we're talking more deeply about Kingdom Hearts. What is it? And we're also talking about something that kind of ties into it, which is Mickey. How did Mickey know that there was a Keyblade in the Realm of Darkness like Ansem knew? Because Ansem, if Ansem wrote that pass, whatever. I'll save it for the next episode. (laughs) Yeah. But that's all we're getting into, you know. So Incredible. For all those people who are like, why don't you just tell us what Kingdom Hearts is? Like, just tell us already. (laughs) We were saving it. We were saving it. Okay. So here we go. Now we're getting into it. Thank you. Hell yeah. We gotta get we gotta get you enticed with all of the all the the foundational stuff first, and then we can answer the bigger questions. So like stick around and we'll answer the bigger questions, the juicier questions. Because we got to keep that listener retention, you know? Hell yeah. So if you have questions about any of that stuff, send it to sheddingstarlight at gmail.com. As you can see, we read every email that we get and interpret whether we want to put it on the show or not. I don't even know if Hannah likes that I do that, that I want to read every single no, one, but I can't help I, it. <laughs> I want to know all of your knowledge. I want It helps me understand okay. seeing what other people's questions 
are because a lot of times I'll have the same questions. Um, yeah, and I, I feel like that's always nice to realize, yeah. like, okay, I'm not the only one who got lost on this. Thank God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So, yeah, I think that's it for today. Is that is that it for today, Mel? I think so. Incredible. Um, so, as always, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Um, if you're listening to this on audio, be sure to review the show on Spotify and Apple Podcasts five stars because you're we're our you're we're your favorite Kingdom Hearts podcast out there. I'm sure. <laughs> um, no shade to anyone else though. <laughs> but um, give us those five stars. Um, tell a friend if they like Kingdom Hearts that there's a, a new lore guide that they can listen to. And um, yeah, I think. That's it. Thank you all for listening, and And we'll we'll see see you in the starlight. starlight.